Okay, welcome to this segment of the Halifax SOS Weekend. If you're watching this, you've contributed. Thank you very much. You know where the donations are going. 50% to the Rugby League Club, 50% to grassroots and community football. So thank you in advance and spread the word. Halifax Rugby League Club is doing great things in these trying times. My name is Brian Carney. It is my pleasure to host this brief interview section for you. And it is my pleasure to invite on some guys who wore the famous Halifax jersey with tremendous pride. They join us from far afield and a little closer to home. If you're at home, give a virtual round of applause, please, to Des Clark, Damien Gibson, Greg Floromo, and the one and only Gavin Clinch. Gentlemen, thanks for coming along. Cheers. Thank thanks you. for having us. Yeah, thank you. Pleasure. It's been a while, guys, since some of you were seen on these shores, and it's been even longer since some of you guys put a jersey on. Let's give us a, a quick update, if you will, and we'll go around the around the room with uh, starting with Des Clark. Can you tell us since rugby league finished for you, what you've been up to and what you're currently doing. Well, Brian, um, I've got into the construction game um, pretty much uh, a couple of years after I left Halifax, and I um, went between that and 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 sort of still playing sub professionally, and I found my way back to France playing rugby league and. Um, from there, obviously, it's only a little stone's throw over to um, England. So on one weekend where I was visiting my little mate Gibbo back in Halifax, I fell in love with a beautiful Yorkshire lass. Um, end up moving back there and marrying her and moved back to Halifax for about eight years. I uh, had two children, um, had a concrete pumping business running out of Halifax for about five years. And about five years ago, we just moved back to the Gold Coast with the kids. Um, who have both started school here now and um, yeah, trying to uh, turn them from uh, little Yorkshire people into, into Gold Coast Lifesavers. We, you chose wisely on both counts. I married a Yorkshire woman as well. I just don't have the sunshine that you guys have got at the moment. Greg Florimo, a man we hear and see from fairly often, still flying the flag for the North Sydney Bears over there in Australia. Flo, give us a little summary, if you will, of your, your post-playing career. Oh, g'day, Brian. Thanks, mate. Um, yeah, just joining you from um, Shelley Beach, New South Wales tonight. Really nice to be here. Um, my career post footy um, has still been about footy. I've been involved with the club as an administrator, as a CEO, as a general manager. Now I'm wellbeing and education manager with the club, which at this present time is probably more important than ever given the um, you know, the circumstances that uh, we're all under. And, and unfortunately, our competitions, the Canterbury Cup and Jersey Flag, which is the reserve grade or second division, I guess you might call it, and our under-20s, has been cancelled for the year. So we're still managing those players and trying to keep them motivated for perhaps, you know, making an NRL team, which obviously the NRL comp's gone ahead, um, or possibly getting ready for next year. So... Still heavily involved in the game, Brian. Really, really, really happy, really proud of you know, still being able to do that and, um, and happy to join you tonight. Well, we thank you very much for your time. We'll go to a man now who either looks very young for his age right now or looked very old when he played. Gavin Clinch. Clinch the thing. <laughs> what keeps you busy? Oh, well, I don't feel young, so that rules that out. Um, so, yeah, so when I finished over in uh, England, I think that was 2005, moved back to the Shire, um, as you do. You don't leave this place. So I come back here, and then I ended up captain coaching down in the Illawarra Wollongong comp for about five or six years. So I went down there, played, coached. Um, yeah, had my, I've got two kids, they're both born over in Halifax. So come back here, set up here, got back into the work. Um, back into operations and then I've been with the same company for about 13, 14 years now. So look after all their national contracts around Australia. So I travel around Australia and facilities and cleaning and security and food and all these areas. So since I left there and come back and back into the workforce and doing that day to day, unfortunately. Sounds like you're rolling in it. Sorry? Sounds like you're rolling in the cash. No, 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 not at all. So I'm not at the moment because there's nothing to do on a Saturday. So I'm on the pun all day from 12 to 6. <laughs> yeah, you've been so lucky. There's nothing to bet on over here. And hey, yeah, man who uh, left a mark and continues to leave a mark on the, the Halifax Club and the environment does, uh, does tremendous work in the community. Damien Gibson, 
you played a large part in pulling all these players together for this for this webcast. What keeps you busy nowadays? Mate, um, I'm still in, in Halifax. I'm in the, in the UK. I've been here for 23 years now, I think. Um, I've got my own, I retired. I've gone into my own fitness business, um, DG Ozfit. So that's going really well. I'm really enjoying that. I had a stint uh, coaching professionally with the Rhinos and Dewsbury Rams straight after I retired. Uh, and then moved on to, to uh, training, fitness training. I'm also doing a little bit of work with the rugby league back on side programs. I'm also getting involved in a really exciting scheme uh, to do with mental health. So watch this space, keep an eye out for that. Um, I'm going to be doing some work with the rugby league on that, which I think is a fantastic concept. Um, so I've got my hand in a few few areas. I'm also working for Rishworth School, uh, training some of their, their elite kids. So, mate, I'm, I've got lots going on. I'm really enjoying life. I've just had a, a little girl. She's 10 months old. So she's keeping me really, really busy. Oh, congratulations. We can see some of her paraphernalia behind you there. It's a little mobile setup. Gibbo, you, you joined Halifax from the Leeds Rhinos. Flo, you came from the Wigan Warriors. Des and Gavin, you signed straight from Australia. I want to get all of you, all four of your takes on your first arrival, not just to the Halifax club, but over to the UK. So, Gibbo, when you first joined the Leeds Rhinos, Greg, when you came to the Warriors, and the two other boys, when you joined Halifax straight off the plane. We'll start with you, Des. What did you expect and what were your first impressions of the country when you landed in? Well, it was when I first got here, I think about four days later, we played a game at um, Featherston. At, I think it's Post Office Road, the old Featherston ground. And Correct. it was back in the days where, they'd, um, where they still had baths. And, um, and I remember after the game, and I'm four, four days off, off Jeff jet lag, and, um, and we sort of came off the ground and I walked back into the, into the uh, dressing rooms and, and all these guys were, you know, with mud and blood and all sorts of them jumping in this, and they're in the bath. And um, I'd sort of come from a, you know, it was fair, it was a little bit more professional over here, and uh, you know, with the hygiene and whatnot, and all that. There was some blokes like Kelvin Skerritt and Carl Harrison, and uh, and they were sort of saying, "Oi, you know, bloody Aussie lad, jump in here." And I kind of had a bit of a decision because in my head I was thinking, "Oh, I'm, you know, I'm looking at all sorts of, you know, Hep B and all sorts of things you've been educated on in Australia about um, hygiene," but I sort of had to had to become one of the boys and jump in. So in I jumped. And, oh, um, he's on or off? Oh, I reckon I might have took him off. I think <laughs> there was a few boys, might have been a few boys with jock straps. Um, but that was pretty much the, um, my first. And I, you know, like, it, you know, it's like when you're, when you're traveling overseas and, and then playing, your head's a bit gone all over the place. And then I think we, then I think I've got caught with, uh, I think it might've been Ned and, um, and Stan and Cov out at the plummet line on that, that night afterwards. And that was my first introduction to drinking pints. <laughs> and, um, and I still remember this. It was, uh, the, I remember the plummet line and so you sort of got stuck drinking uh, with, with some blokes that could really handle it. They, they put, the, put, put the new Aussies there to test them out. But, um, geez, they sent me home in a, in a pretty bad way anyway. Professional rugby league, late 90s. Flo, you, uh, you arrived over, signed for Wigan, uh, and then and I headed across the, uh, the Pennines <laughs> to Halifax. What were your first impressions? I mean, you had experience of travelling over here. You played against Halifax with Australia. Um, but settling into life in England as a professional rugby league player, how did it hit you? Well, my first impression of Halifax was in 94 when, when we came over with the Kangaroos and we played at Thrill Mall um, and, and got away with a win against a very you know, solid Halifax team. I think there was a young Dickie Smith on the wing there. Um, which I remember as much as I remember the ground itself, which we, you know, we ended up training um, quite a bit there. Um, but we were obviously in Sh at the Shea in 2000. But my memories, I'd actually signed two years with Wigan when I came over. And at, uh, at the point where we didn't make the semis in 99, um, I got a call from, from Gary Mercer. And he said, you want to come to, to, to Halifax? So, well, no, mate, no, I'm, I'm with Wigan. He said, no, no, you've been released. Uh, it's, you're not there anymore. So I, I spoke to Morris and he, Morris Lindsay and he said, no, no, Flo, we're not happy with our imports. You're free to go and negotiate. So 
That was what I learned. You know. That's pretty good. Yeah, That's a pretty well. good impression. <laughs> um, but it was awesome. I loved it. The, you know, the people, the town, the energy, the support. It was such a great memory, especially for me in my final year. And and it just took me back to when I when I really loved the game as a young fella. That's what you played for was all that passion and energy. And 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 the last, that that season there, particularly my last game at at, 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 uh, at the Shea. You know, we'll, we'll live in my memory forever, as will the people in the town. And you left the uh, the DW Stadium as it became and headed over to the Shea to play for Halifax. Gavin Clinch, following a magnificent season for the club as a, as a, on a whole, and you as an, as an individual in 98, you went the other way in 1999 at the end of the season and headed it over to, uh, to the Warriors. Yeah. Um, so I think, uh, well, first, firstly, I got over the same time as Dev's. When I did arrive for Halifax in 98, I was about the same day we arrived. And yeah, we went to that um, post office road and it was freezing. But I remember after the game, we got on the bus. And I think it might have been Challenge Cup game because it was sponsored by Regal. And we got on the bus and it was like, it was like a fire on the bus. Every bloke <laughs> in the team was smoking bungers, cats. I thought, how good is this? So... But that was um, there. And then when we got back three days later, we went to Lanzarote for two weeks training and we landed in Lanzarote and they had like this storm that was out of control. So John Penderbury said, look, the only way we're going to bond is to just get on the piss. So we got on the piss for three days. So I thought, how good is this? Um, but then, yeah, I ended up 98. Yeah, we had a real good year and financially the club kind of didn't get do as well. And they, I think we... We're on a lot of bonuses and they just didn't bring in the revenue they did. And unfortunately, at the end of that year, they just said, you and Chris Chester go to Wigan or basically we shut up shop. So, look, at the time, I thought, oh, yeah, it's great going to Wigan. Um, but it didn't work out for me. It was probably similar to Flow. I ended up coming back to Halifax and I just, I enjoyed that more being the, you know, the local environment and everyone's around and, you know, a lot of locals. So, yeah, that was unfortunately, but I wouldn't have turned down going to Wigan because if I hadn't have gone, I would have looked back on it. But in the end, I, that first couple of years at Halifax was, yeah, it was enormous. When you win and two, it makes a difference. Gibbo, you came to Halifax through the Leeds Rhinos as well. That was your first port of call after uh, stepping off the plane from Australia. Yeah, mate, I, I just remember cold. I'd come from the Cowboys up in um, North Queensland, scorching hot. Winters are about 25 degrees. You're sweating in air conditioning and then you, you come over here and, oh, my Lord, I come over in January, I got here a bit late, just freezing. Going to train and wanting to wear about five track suits. Um, just could, couldn't do it. Didn't want to move, couldn't move my fingers or anything like that. And I got off the plane. They took me straight from Manchester to training at at Leeds then the coach says oh mate you can have a run out tomorrow we'll just give you five minutes so I ended up playing the, the very next day so uh being very very cold but um just couldn't understand anyone either like the accents now I'm fine with I've been here that long but I just could not understand a word anyone said to me just nodded and yep yep but uh yeah that I just remember it being bitterly cold I wonder is the inability to decipher what exactly people are saying a bonus. Greg, you referred to, uh, to Morris as Lindsay's comments about overseas signings. An extra degree of pressure comes with being a high-profile signing coming into the competition. The crowds are pretty close to the ground, and we know they're certainly vocal. What are your abiding memories of, of the atmosphere at Rugby League grounds over here? Oh, it was brutal. It was brutal. If you're fat or slow or you <laughs> dropped the ball... You were gone. <laughs> they were in, yeah. I remember playing at Salford and copying the you fat bastard with 5,000 people. And you don't have a comeback, do you? I mean, what do you say? <laughs> you know, so, um, but uh, again, I love, the, I love the, you know, the noise and everyone's into it. You know, they wear the colours, they've got the scarf, they've got, they're, they're, they're invested totally. And it's, um, it's something that I think Australian crowds could learn from because they're a bit fickle about, you know, win or loss or... Uh, good or bad, but I was, in the UK, particularly in Halifax, and as I say, it was back to what, you know, rugby league was about to me. It was about your tribe and your community and people just getting behind you. Des, you played your part in that fantastic 1998 season. I looked down at the squad that Halifax had available, like some phenomenal names in it. Finishing third, dream team membership for some of the guys in, in the side. There's also another interesting aspect. It's the amount of people that went into coaching from that uh, from that side and people that are currently coaches. 
when you reflect back, who did you have highlighted as a potential coach of the future? Um, yeah, well, that was there. There are a lot to, uh, with uh, Richard Marshall and uh, Rolls and Chesney. All those guys gone in. Uh, even uh, Carl Harrison had a pretty long, long career, didn't he? But just before you go to that, I was just going to say um, with the crowds. You know, if uh, you you boys remember Clinchy and Gibbo when Freddie Talungi uh, scored in a Challenge Cup uh, match at Thrum Hall. It might have been our last competitive game at Thrum Hall. And he jumped up into what they called the scratching shed behind the post. I mean, he lost him. The crowd just <laughs> took him. <laughs> remember that? He just sort of jumped yeah, up the top yeah. and put his hand up. And they just, they just took him. Yep. But, um, yeah, it was, uh, like you say, the crowds were unbelievable. But, um, yeah, I mean, Chesney obviously was quite, quite young there. But he always had that, you know, had, that, had a good brain on him. And, and Paul Rowley, very astute uh, player, I guess. Marshy was a bit of a surprise packet, but he had a good, you know, he's obviously a, a good demeanour, but I think myself as a front rower, being a front rower, how are you going to be telling, uh, telling halfbacks how to run their plays? But obviously Marshy found a way and had, uh, had some uh, good tutelage along the way. And again, Carl Harrison, I don't know, um, I suppose if he told me to run through a brick wall, I'd certainly do that um, just through sheer fear. But, um, you know, I guess... Yeah, it's 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 a credit to the the guys that they've you know kept their rugby rugby league careers going so long uh, past post playing, I guess. They reckon when he was coach of Salford, Colonel Harrison, I'm talking about. Clint, you may be able to support this. He used to pull out the samurai sword when he'd call him into the office. <laughs> yeah. And he, yeah. he used to pull out the samurai sword to emphasize his point. Yep. Video sessions. He used to get it out and he'd just walk up and down the aisle, just swinging it around. And if you miss tackles or you're out of line, you had to duck. <laughs> uh, he was mad. <laughs> he was mad. But he was, he was the old school, you know. He, you know, their training was trained. Mondays you go to pub and still, even when. The back end when I finished over there, I think in 2004 or five, it was still Monday sessions at the pub and everyone together. And yeah, but if you, he had the sword and he used to pull it out on a Monday if we lost. So interesting fella. He, he didn't mind the drink, Calvin Scared. He had a great drinking buddy, Neil Cowie, who was a former teammate of yours mm. at, uh, at Wigan Flow. Yeah, good, good, another good redhead. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it was interesting when I when I got to Wigan. I obviously spent thirteen seasons in in Sydney, and I walked into the dressing room the very first training session, and I wasn't quite sure, you know, where do you put your bag, you know, where where, where you know who people are, and I happened to sit next to Neil Cowie, and I put my bag down, I put my hand out, and say, "You know, mate, Greg Florimer," and he goes, "Oh no, you are. You can sit over there." <laughs> it, was, it was a really warm welcome <laughs> from the big man, but we came good, mates. I love you. <laughs> that, that's, that's, Neil, that's Neil Cowie in a story. There's no doubt about that. Guys, uh, yeah. let's just flick through your, your most memorable moment in a Halifax jersey. If you could, Gibbo, I mean, you've played plenty of times for the blue and white. What, what's, your, what's your most memorable moment? Uh, mate, there's probably not one moment. It, it was just that whole 98 season. You know, we came... There is, there wasn't any... question here. Hey? There is in terms of the question. Give me one uh, moment. Don't one go moment. into waffle. Ah, oh, mate. Just... Probably just in the, in the dressing room with the boys, with that buzz. Um, uh, I, I can't pick a moment. It's just being with the boys every day. Being in that changing room, having that, that team environment before we went out and, and seeing the boys getting revved up and knowing it was game time and knowing everyone had your back. We had a great bunch of boys. The staff, everyone there were fantastic. I still look back with my fondest memories of rugby league. You know, the, the kit men have been there forever. It's just such a family orientated club. <laughs> the boys have touched on that. And it wasn't just about the boys. You know, after the game, we went into the Weavers and you spent time with the fans, you spent time with the staff and everyone was just like one big happy family and it was just something and I've, I've lived here ever since I, I love Halifax I love the people um, and I think I think it's a great place great town great club so uh, one moment oh god okay can't, can't. <laughs> Gee, that, that was a lot of waffling wasn't it <laughs> <laughs> meant to be Morrison here right go to them. <laughs> 
we'll go to Des Clark. Des, if you can, take us back to a uh, moment in a Halifax jersey that stands stands strongest in your memory. No waffling. Uh, if you can help, if you can help it. Oh, uh, again, it's tough. But I, that that game, um, that Halifax versus Huddersfield Challenge Cup match, and it was it was one of our first games, and it was at Thrum Hall. It was a packed house. Probably, I think it was the last competitive game. And I got sent off for 10 in the first couple of minutes, trying to assert myself, you know, as an overseas player, because a bit of pressure on. And I had a bit of a fallout with, uh, I think it was big Jeff Wittenberg, who I'm pretty good mates with now. And um, I got 10 in the bin. And then I kind of got a bit of slack going off, getting going up the tunnel. And, um, and I think Huddersfield, a good mate of mine, Chris Orr, was playing for them then. And he was uh, telling me how, you know, they, they were so, going to be such a good club and blah, blah, blah. So anyways, when I came back on, I kind of had a bit of a point to prove. And um, I think I, at the death of the match, I think Clinchy put me through under the post. And um, again, I kinda, again, <laughs> yeah. And, um, and I had a bit of a sigh of relief and it was a, it was a good, the, the crowd went berserk. And, um, the, you know, they were right on top of me at Thrum Hall and, and, the, and the boys kind of came and it was like I'd sort of half redeemed myself. I gave Ori a little bit of a wink. Um, as we took the victory and went on to the next round of the uh, Challenge Cup for, the, for that year. And then uh, Stan probably gave me a few regals in the uh, sheds afterwards as well. <laughs> well, there you go, Gavin Clint. You've given Des Clark his best moment in the Halifax jersey. Fair to say he didn't return the favour? Not on the field. So, <laughs> not on it. Um, so, me, Brian? Yes. Yes. I, I guess me, in yeah, 98, we were going well and I think Bradford were one of the top teams at the time. They were huge every from one to thirteen. They were six foot three massive. And I remember we played them at the Shea on a Sunday afternoon and for for that crowd there we had a capacity crowd and I think we knocked them off quite comfortably. And I thought that was you know, you realise then what the local derby what what it meant for the, the club, Halifax versus Bradford or Huddersfield. But at the time Bradford they were the guns and you know that was a really good occasion. And again you go back in and everyone celebrated together and you've seen what it meant for a lot of the locals to win those type of games. Yeah, that's quite an achievement back in that in that time. Bradford going through some difficulties at the moment, but a win against them back in that in that time was certainly significant. Flo, you've had a storied career, international, club level. I just take us back to that career coming to an end in a Halifax jersey. What's the standout moment from your season in Halifax? It was actually the final game, Brian. We lined up that it was my final professional game and there was a bit of support there from the club and we beat Huddersfield quite convincingly and I made a bit of ceremony out of it in that I took my boots off and I walked out to the middle of the field and I placed them on the centre of, part of the kickoff spot and left them there and walked off. And It was quite you know, emotional and ceremonious and I did that. And I thought, you know, that's it. I've, I've hung my boots up. I've put my boots out. But since that day, it's amazing how many amount of Halifax fans have actually got my boots. <laughs> Somebody keeps telling me, I've got your boot flow. I've got the founder on the, <laughs> of the, of the Shea. Uh, but look, that day in particular, we won really well. It was a beautiful sign-off. And it was just a culmination of, you know, of a really nice, nice time for my life. All right, boys, we're, we're nearing the end of this special podcast, or podcast, I should say, for the Halifax SOS weekend. We're in lockdown over here. It's, for obvious reasons, a stricter lockdown, and it looks like it will be lasting longer than, than you guys over in Australia. Give all the test to that. Um, the pubs are closed over here. They're closed in Australia. When they do open up, Des Clark, you can bring three former Halifax teammates into the pub with you for that first cool point. Who are they? Well, I'd have to bring Gibbo because he was my roommate over there, and um, he was uh, always a good bit of um, bit of entertainment for us. Uh, after he had about two pints, because um, he could hardly stand up. I Clinch, he lived two doors up, so I'd probably have to go with him because then I could share a cab home with him. Um, I wouldn't have bought Rolls because he was probably the tightest man in the Halifax gear, um, so he wouldn't have got a start. Um, Ming Mercer. Great bloke, but he's a Kiwi. And, uh, you know, that Trent Tasman thing, I, I certainly wouldn't be putting up with that uh, Kiwi talk. Him tell, start telling me how many tests he's played for New Zealand. Um, probably, uh, 
Chrissy Chester or Carl Gillespie were uh, some mates we used to always sort of hang around with. So yeah, I'd probably I'd probably take fish cake, fish cake, and uh, my two little uh, roomies there. Thanks, Des. <laughs> All right, Chrissy, you made the trip. Are you going to reciprocate? Yeah, I. So we live next door to each other. So we basically. Des and Gibbo were next door and Nicole and I were next door. So we basically, Gibbo, Des, I and Nicole and all of, we went out basically all the time. And even if it wasn't out for on the piss, it was like a Tuesday night dinner up at one of the Moorcock Inn or somewhere. So definitely those two guys. And then when we left and went to other clubs, we kind of always caught up and, you know, always ended out together. So, you know, it was some pretty special times there. So definitely those two. Um, Gibbo was great of a night, but the next morning he was... Uh, a very different person so he, we had to drag him out of bed to train him and dress him and had to do a lot of things for the poor little fella but he was he was very good of a night young Damien um, and my last person would have been Marty Moana so he was another uh, guy that we used to knock around with all the time and if you ever got into trouble it was good that you had him around so he was just a good bloke and a you know old school and just had good time we had some really great time so yeah Des, Gibbo and Marty for me. Yeah, he's uh, he works with us at Sky Sports doing the stats, Marty Moana. He hasn't got any smaller, let me tell you. You would be kind of behind <laughs> him. If Give him a the reckon the more athletic you are, the, the harder the drink hits you. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put that down as your excuse. Who are you taking yeah. on the that first trip out after the lockdown? End? Well, mate, I've been giving good think uh, thought to this. Obviously, Des, because Des, mate, played. He's awesome on the guitar. We had plenty of uh, guitar sessions back at home. We'd take half a Halifax back to the flat with us after a night out. So Des could be doing the entertainment. Clinchy would be there just because I can drink a lot more than him. And, uh, <laughs> and he can look after me. Flo was in there, but then I remembered his favourite party trick when he has a beer is to get his pint in his bicep and when he sculls it, throws it over his shoulder and smashes the pint <laughs> on the floor. So it wouldn't be kicked out of anywhere too quick. So I couldn't have him in my squad. Uh, and again, it'd probably be Marty Moana just because he's so big. No one's going to mess with you. And he's also a card shark, so he could win all the money. We wouldn't have to pay for any drinks, and uh, it'd be a free night. Oh, there, there are some names of the past there. Yeah, Marvin Golden, uh, Doncaster at one stage. Yeah, he was a rhino as well for a long time. Gibbo, was he at the rhinos when you were there? Yes. Yeah, he was there. He was at the rhinos, so good man. Yeah, yeah Daryl Purvis as well, like lightning quick, absolutely. Guys, that's brilliant. We're going to bring it to a close here for the this special edition for the uh, Halifax SOS weekend. I'm going to give you the chance. We're going to start with Des. Just just a line, a thank you, a farewell, a hello to the people of Halifax that are supporting this initiative, support the club and support the community. Desi, off to you. Yeah, well, um, uh, first of all, hello to everyone uh, down, at the, uh, down at the show and the uh, supporters and the fans that... Um, that are, that are following the Halifax Club. Um, hope you're all well um, and staying safe in this time. Um, hope you're still keeping that uh, support for the club who's going to need you more than ever at the moment and when they get back. And um, and let's all stick there. And um, in what, one thing about the Halifax and rugby league in general, it's a, it's so much of a family. And, the, and, I, and I felt that and I, even when I went back to Halifax. Um, yeah, it's now's a time that we, we all need to stick together and... Um, Remember, you know, where, what, we're, what we're about and who we are and um, where we want to be when we come out of all this. Nice words. Gavin? Uh, yeah, just like to say hi to everyone over there. I've, I want to get back over the next few years, just um, dreading that flight. But, I, you know, I understand what, they, what they're going through at the moment. It's difficult for everyone. I, you know, my young bloke plays junior footy over here and they're crying to get back onto the field. I think we are ahead of you guys over there in the way that, you know, we're coming back, but it's tough. And I, you know, I, some of the greatest people I've ever met over there. And, you know, you look at Stan and Hilda and Cov and Ned and all these type of people, they were just what makes rugby league. And they made, you, they made that club. And, you know, I hope they're doing well. And if there's any way we can support, I've seen they're fundraising some other items and that I might send some jumpers over to Gibbo that they might be able to auction or something to get some money towards the juniors and get them back on the field and get the seniors back on the field also. So good luck. 
Thanks very much. So kind of generous as well to send over some items. Flo, will you send over your boots from that last game you played in? <laughs> <laughs> I will. I think I've got a replica pair there. But <clears throat> Brian, <clears throat> just thanks for the opportunity. You know, it's it's really nice to be able to connect, even though there's a lot of distance and a lot of time between um, bet between drinks. But I feel a sense of, you know, it's great to see the guys on my screen again. And, and if we can do anything to support you know, the, the Junior Rugby League or the actual efforts going on in Halifax Town. I think that's what we're here for. And it's just a matter of a phone call, Brian. So thanks for having me. And, and you too, Gibbo. Thanks for getting it together, mate. Yeah, thank uh, you. Yeah, good on you, boys. Yeah, absolutely. I want to end with you, Damien, because while you gave a lot to the, uh, the club, the club gave a lot to you, the community gave a lot to you, and that relationship continues to this day. So I think it's fitting that the, the final word to anybody that's watching this goes to you. Yeah. Well, mate, I just want to thank everyone for their support. As we've all mentioned, Halifax has got a special place in all our hearts. Love the club to bits. Um, let's get them. Let's keep supporting them. Let's get them back up in Super League and uh, and get those those crowds, those grandstands full. Des Clark, Gavin Clinch, Greg Florimo, and of course Damien Gibson. Boys, thank you very much for your time for this very special podcast for the Halifax SOS Weekend. Hope to see you all soon. Thanks.